Exergy Analysis of Evaporative Cooling Towers by Josh Hooper and Holly Sadler. In order to understand the role of exergy in a cooling tower, it is important to understand what a cooling tower is and how it works. An evaporative cooling tower is a specialized heat exchanger used to cool process water by way of evaporation. Heated process water enters the top of the cooling tower and is dispersed into the fill by spray nozzles. The purpose of the fill is to maximize surface area and therefore maximize evaporation time. Because of gravity, the water makes its way down the fill into the basin. On its way to the basin, the water comes into contact with air, which blows counter to the water flow, which allows for evaporation of the heat. The cooled water in the basin is then ready to be sent back into the process. Cooling towers are a cost-effective and energy-efficient way to provide cooling to large buildings and industrial facilities. For large heating and air conditioning systems, a central chiller plant is a lot more energy efficient rather than having refrigeration systems or individual chillers at buildings. So in the central steam plant, excuse me, the central chiller plant, a chiller has an auxiliary equipment that's a cooling tower and the cooling tower takes that heat and uh, dissipates that to the atmosphere. The water that goes through the cooling tower is condenser water and the condenser water circulates through the condenser of the chiller and then back through the cooling tower. Going through the, the chiller, you have to maintain a particular temperature range for the chiller to operate efficiently. And also if the water temperature gets too high, it could cause problems with the refrigerant cycle and cause the chiller to uh, surge. Well, again, if you optimize the cooling tower, that helps to minimize the size of the chill water pump and also the cooling tower fans. And those pumps and fans also play a, a role into selecting the size of the motor, the wire size, and the, the starter size to go to that. So all of that together can have a pretty significant impact on your equipment costs for in, initial installation. Well, again, when you look at the entire system, when you look at the chiller and the electrical energy that goes to the chiller and the chill water pumps and the condenser water pumps and the cooling tower fans, again, you just want to uh, minimize the amount of energy that's required for the entire system. And the cooling tower is a sig significant part of that. So what is exergy? Exergy can be defined as the maximum useful work possible during a process that brings the system into equilibrium with the heat reservoir, reaching maximum entropy. Exergy input of a system will equal the exergy output plus the exergy destroyed. Exergy in a cooling tower can be defined as the available work equal to the work done on or by the system minus the expansion or compression work, which is also equal to the exergy transferred to the environment plus the change in exergy from the inlet to the outlet minus the exergy destruction. The air exergy of a cooling tower consists of three terms of exergy flow, thermal exergy, chemical exergy, and mechanical exergy. However, mechanical exergy can be neglected because there's no pressure loss through a cooling tower. Now let's examine the energy balance of a cooling tower. We know the exergy of moist air will consist of thermal exergy plus chemical exergy. We can also determine the exergy of water and water vapor. Therefore, for our exergy balance on the cooling tower, the exergy of water will equal to the exergy of water vapor plus the exergy of air. A few more equations we can analyze is for exergy destruction and second law efficiency. Exergy destruction is equal to the inlet exergy of water plus the inlet exergy of water vapor plus the exergy of the makeup water minus the exiting exergy of water and the exiting exergy of vapor. Second law efficiency is equal to 1 minus the destruction of exergy divided by the exergy of inlet water, water vapor, and makeup water. Now we can analyze a few exergy plots. This plot shows the relationship of exergy efficiency and exergy destruction through a cooling tower. 
As you can see, exit destruction rises after it reaches about 25% of the way through the tower. However, for exergy efficiency, we can see that it flattens off and slightly declines after the initial 25% through the tower. The second plot on the right shows exergy flow through the cooling tower for various exergy types. All of the exergies rise throughout the tower except for the thermal exergy, which decreases. We can also analyze the effect of air velocity on exergy destruction through the cooling tower. The fastest air velocity of 1.5 meters per second gives us the least amount of exergy destruction for any height of the tower. Additionally, we can see the relationship between exergy lost along the cooling tower for different packing types, which is also known as the cooling tower fill. According to the plot, we can see that hexagonal fill will yield the lowest amount of exergy loss. An exergy analysis of a cooling tower is a useful thermodynamic technique for assessing and improving the efficiency of processes and systems. Also, by examining the exergy destruction properties, it is possible to optimize the environmental and economic performance of a system. Ultimately, future studies can be done to better determine the distribution of exergy loss and minimize exergy destruction by optimizing the cooling tower.